Jonathan's new Valtra's arrived. He hasn't got black wheels like the other one. But wheel weights, looks quite smart. UBU on the number plate. That's a, a road sweeper company around here. There's the trading now going in with the black wheels. There's the one with the white wheels. I think it better with black wheels to be honest. Got a different window, hasn't it? It's like this has got a door this side, or is that what has it? Old tractor manufacturers have got their life fitting on the side, as well as the back. Quick look around the cab, joystick is on there, quite handy. That's just um, gears, and then you've got three manual spools, controls for the linkage, so how fast it drops, how high it lifts, position and draft control depending on whether you're using like a fertiliser spreader or something that it's pulling to deep in the ground. The drive balance control on and off, which is if you're going down the road with weight on, it cushions it. Manual switches for near the pickup hitch lever. Uh, I must dump it for the air brakes for trailers. That might be the hitch in and out. Like two power points. PTO selection. Four wheel driving differential lock. Cubby holes for putting stuff in. No fridge though. Sometimes they have a fridge on there. And then passenger seat that folds up. Forwards and reverse on the shuttle there. Air brake analog gauge, which is nice to see. And then that tells you what gear you're in on there. Radio and aircon. All your light switches. Here we go, 150 horsepower, I think it is. I think it's a 154. That's the old tyre with the tread depth. And then this is the new one. I reckon the old tyres have got more tread on. The Pirellis as well, yeah, trolley boards. Oh, what they are as well, aren't they? TM 600s, what are them? TM oh, they're a dear attire. Not a lot of difference though, is there? No front linkage on this one. Just looking at the tyres, that's got 20 cleats all the way around, so these. That's only got 19, yet the gap in them looks closer than the gap in them. Must just be the design of the actual cleat. We have a tape measure in the baler for checking the bale length. Anyway, I've just gone to get this out the toolbox for the drill. I don't think it's quite big enough. But the tape measure in the baler was an 8 metre tape measure. We don't need an 8 metre tape measure in the baler. We need a 3 metre tape measure in the baler. This 8 metre tape measure should be in the workshop. So we're going to swap them around. Just using one of the seed socks. We're going to swap from barley back onto wheat drilling now. So we dropped some barley out the drill. But they had about 600 kilos left in instead of 150. Anyway, it's all fitted on the seed sock. And that Merlot's doing a regen. So it's going to basically go through a cycle now and clean all its particular filter out by burning the stuff off. Filling up now with a tiny little bit of liquid fertilizer just to hot the hot the water up so the glyphosate works a bit quicker because we've got a little bit of broad leaf weeds and thistles in the bean stubbles that I'm spraying off. I've just backed up here because it just reaches the hose and that's like top members and close. Got baby partridge there flying away and some pigeons. Just spraying the field off at the back of the yard now. There's the drill getting loaded with seed, ready to drill it. If you watch now, you'll see the jet start to come on because that's where I went round that ditch before. So that's come on. Then you hear a hiss and then the next section's on. And another hiss and then there you go. There you go. And then right on to the end again. So all the sections are on now. I'm gonna go and spray around this pond now. Spraying around this pond now, which will then mark on the GPS the internal boundary within the field of the pond. So when we next come in it, if ever you try and, I know you can't anyway because there's bushes, but if the boom ever went over the pond, it would cut the boom off. Because on this pond you can't, like you say, because of bushes, but some ponds don't have bushes around them and you could put, slide the boom over the, fly the boom over the pond and it, the jets would still be on. Whereas now it won't because the GPS will remember it and it'll turn it off. 
So if we look up here now, we should have if we press stop up there and then save that boundary. So then when we look at the field now in that view, you can see this is the bin I've not sprayed, this is the pond I've just marked out, and then this is the ditch as well that we've gone round, so I've marked all that in boundaries. So we've got a little bit left to spray in this corner and then up and down there twice, and that's the field finished. This is the one, like I say, at the back of the yard. It must be dry, there's some dust coming off that drill. Go a bit closer to it, you can have a better look. Really dry. Just got out the sprayer because the aircon's on. I think this is the warmest I've ever drilled wheat. So I'm just checking if it's burying all the seed. It's the odd. Odd one on top, but that's probably because it's a little bit rough along this headland from a bit of culture bounce. But hopefully the seed's all down there in a nice slot. Um, see it there. Hopefully get a little bit of moisture on Thursday. This will be up and away. This is the first field we're drilling anyway. Behind the yards we can keep a close eye on it. So that's quite handy really. Got off the sprayer to take a picture. Lots of eagle eye people noticed that there's no play buttons on these two wheels. That is because I only did the other side the other night. So I need to do these. Maybe I'll do them today. See if you can spot if I have. Booms are just folding out now on the sprayer. I'm going to spray this 44 acre block now. Sam will come over here then with a the drill and drill this. But where the ditch was cleaned out last year, Chris and Danny cleaned the ditch out and the silt was so wet we couldn't really level it. So. We're going to level it with the ditch just along the ditch now, so we can sew right up to the ditch again. I'm just going to move this bit of fly tip in. Someone's tipped a mattress in the field. Not a very big one, though. I have to move that out of the way. I've just sprayed this off now because it's got some weeds in it and some bits of volunteer wheat. Andrew's just there now putting his AB line in with the fast track because we're going to ever so slightly diss this sort of 10 mil because as if when you scrap through the straw, there's the odd little wheat seed that hasn't germinated yet so we want it to germinate and grow and then when we drill it with barley and I spray the pre-em on the barley which is a pre-emergent spray is what pre is called I'll put a little bit of glyphosate in with it and not any volunteer wheat out so hopefully the barley should be clean next year and not have volunteer wheat in it but we don't want to disc it too late too deep otherwise it'll take too long to come up so we're literally going to do it like 10 mil hopefully we get this bit of rain on Thursday it germinates it's up within a week and then it's sprayed off and then off we go again with a new crop of barley. We've got a bit of muck in this field. It was oilseed rape last year. And due to the lunacy, now we can't spread muck at this time of year for a crop of wheat. So what we've decided to do is, rather than store it all in one corner of the field, we're gonna store it thinly in a little layer all over. So, it, so it's, it's a bit easier on the eye for the residents nearby. Yeah, so you could nearly say it's illegal now to spread muck at this time of year, but we are going to put a wheat crop on this field that will require a bit of end, especially because it's not going to be work deep the ground. It's, it's, it's nearly zero tilled. We have ever so slightly this the top lightly just to get the, the volunteers to grow. But the, the wheat crop will use up any nitrogen that's in this muck, and with it being mostly horse muck, it's basically shavings, so it's just compost really. It's just a little bit of bit of wood shavings, a little bit of straw in it, so it's something to feed the worms over winter as well, that's the other thing, but yeah, the, the, the lunatics are now running the asylum at the Environment Agency, and they're bringing out these rules, they want us to cut down, they want us to lock carbon, cut down use of fertiliser and different things, yet now they don't want us to put muck on the ground in optimum conditions when it's dry and you're going to get no runoff, it's just crazy. It's like the Midwest, that dust there above the digger is Sam sowing. We need some rain. Andrew's just levelling off some ruts there in the gateway and it's, <laughs> it's dust everywhere. Nice long straight field now. Again, still on glyphosate, killing off the weeds so that when we drill the wheat into it, we've basically disinfected the seed bed and hopefully just wheat will grow. So when it's on a nice straight field like this, and I can turn the GPS on now, I can move the steering wheel out of the way, and I can probably edit most of today's video while I'm spraying. 
muck is now all spread, so Jonathan's washing off the Merlot so that we can use it again in the grain stores. I've just arrived at Lim. Let me turn the radio down. I've just arrived at Lim, which is where we were combining on Saturday. I'm now going to spray this off and then hopefully we're going to get some sort of cover crop into it. It's probably going to go dark by the time we've finished because it'll take a while. But if you want to watch another video, it's over there. If you want to subscribe, it's here. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Everyone seems to think that an open day would be a good idea. But when should it be? Should it be October, November, December or January? Because obviously they're the quiet months for me. So let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you all tomorrow. I've just got out the spray before the final sort of edit because look at that sky. If you want to check it out, it's on Instagram. Uh, Agricontract on Instagram, that's me, and on Twitter. But yeah, amazing. And it's a nice night to be out and it's as still as anything. Perfect night for spraying.